just m miles and miles and miles of single track. No free kilometers. You work all the time, but you, you're, like, you're always on your toes. We'll be very blessed to be able to do a race like this. It's a life experience, it's not a race. I think it's a lot of who we are as a people. We like to show our country off, we're proud of it. We're great with hospitality. We want to invite people over. We want to put some meat on the, on the bra and yeah, absolutely. It's part of the culture. Last time we went to South Africa, the whole world shut down. <laughs> the global pandemic. We just got word, the race officially canceled. Alex and I we kind of had it in the back of our mind ever since we couldn't do it last time. So for 18 months, we've been talking about it, riding our mountain bikes and kind of like pushing each other. But he can't race. No ideal. Not ideal. Time for a miracle. We were doing a small mountain bike stage race. Things were going pretty well, I would say. And a uh, tree jumped out in front of me somewhere and it didn't move. So then the search kind of started in earnest. I straight away texted Mitch Dockout. He's the one guy on the team I'm sure would love to come and do this. Hey mate, um, our flight to Oz got cancelled and moved. I'm keen, eh? But I just don't think I can. Sorry, man. He was out, so it was looking pretty uh, grim. I thought of Team Armani. It's a group of African-based riders. The idea behind the team is to, to create opportunities for riders who you know, normally don't have it. Hey, is this Kenneth? Habari. Kwa majina naitwa Kenneth Karaya Mongai. Naishi kwa kijiji inaitwa Kikuyu, karibu na Nairobi. Kenneth is a rider from Kenya and from what I know, he's the fastest mountain bike rider in Kenya. I just thought, I was like, this is perfect. These guys have experience racing in Africa, um, and a lot of them are really fast off road. Kenneth, it's Lachlan, how you doing? So you can do it? Yeah. Okay, good. Well, uh, have you been training? I've never met Nakla before. Even before I meet him, they already give me uh, to be determined to, to do more. It's even better. Because now the experience will be one on one. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How did you travel? Oh, it was smooth. Smooth? Yeah. We're good? Yeah. Yeah. You like the hat? <laughs> I'm excited. Really excited. Yeah. Good. 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 Yeah. Guide us, young guys. It will be a good thing to inspire them. I had the baptism of fire. I had a small little get down. No, I had a small clash. It's coming down there. Because the bike must feel fun. fun. I, I feel like it's putting me on one side, right? I think two days and then. Uh, yeah. You get used to it. We'll do one more lap. Can do one more. One more? Uh, it's a big deal. It's the first race I remember seeing what you would now consider like what we would call like an alternative race. Just like the landscapes, like the heat, the competition, like big bunches and like 
I was aware of it like before I was even really aware of like mountain biking. It's a tour, eight days long, but it's also very unique in that it's it's partner based. So you have to ride with another rider that determines the result, which is actually a really cool format, I think. I've never rode a kit like this. It's good. Yeah. <coughs> and you have jazz. Yeah. It's a blessing. Yeah. I'm feeling good. <laughs> I'm feeling good. Just nervous a bit because uh, of today. But when we start, we start the day, it will be fine. This is an interesting combination. EF Education Nippo pair of Lachlan Morton and Kenneth Karaya from Kenya on their first uh, efforts on the Amsterdam Olympic. Fantastic to see. We're able to pick them up very, very comfortably after the week. Yes. A team following them. I was a bit nervous, but Loki, Loki is very good and he told me don't worry, we are going to kick these guys the ass and he kept giving me the confidence. And actually, by the time the, I was feeling better, like when is the race going to start? I used to think like, uh, okay, oh, I can't race that, I can't do that race, I can't do that. But with me being here, I think it will change a lot of people's perspective, the way they, think, they are thinking. And see like more than their limits and like they, can, they start making their goals bigger. Like anything, just work hard, anything can, can come off, opportunities can come, like they came to me, yeah. I'm ready to change the um, like this. Uh, Alright, my turn. Your turn. <laughs> uh, no, no, we still this. Let's just let's just keep it. PG. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's nice. Sweet tip. Can Not me the out. And then we're going to do this. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> we reversed it. Oh, oh. oh. tickets arrived. Tickets, please. Tickets. Yeah. 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 
I was like losing the the morale, the positivity of cycling. I had missed a lot of opportunities, like going to Commonwealth Games in Glasgow, which I had already qualified. I was actually to quit cycling. It was come becoming more of like political. The, hap the happiness I used to have, like the joy when I'm riding, the freedom, it was coming to an end. I had this thing in my, my, my head, I was fighting with it. I was personally I love cycling, but then if something is hurting you more again and again, then even your mind tends to lose, to lose it. And I have to say this was like my last punch. In cycling, I was like, if I do this, I finish, nothing comes out, I'm out. <laughs> It's the fourth day. Hello and welcome to 2021's APSA Cape Epic Stage 3s. And a stage to savour today as they loop in and around these beautiful mountains. It's going to be brutally hard. It's going to be hot. The temperature is rising. The intensity is rising around this incredible race. I always think I'm not like competitive anymore. Until I am. I was ready to like race hard. That was like the hardest bit for me was to like just let the race go. And this is Lachlan Morton of EF Education. What's the problem, Lucky? Not good. Nope. No chain. I uh, snapped my chain. And, uh, yeah. For whatever reason, we bring a chain breaker. Yeah. That's right. It was, it was harder than I thought it was going to be because I felt better than I thought I'd be. I felt like I was like, okay, I'm ready to race this thing. It surprised me. I was annoyed at myself that like I was struggling to like, just be like, I'll let it go. And still finished quite high up in the overall. So amazing how he came back from a broken chain and still managed to claw back some time. So extra performance from the team from EF Cycling. I think we needed a rest though. Anyway, so it was a blessing in disguise. Um, yeah, no, I actually, it was nice to get a walk in to loosen the legs up for the rugby this afternoon. And just like before your eyes, you could just see you improve. <laughs> like uh, constantly. It's like a uh, montage. 
<laughs> no, except it's actually playing out in real time. Yeah, today in the end I was feeling... I was still feeling, good. It's still good. A lot of people are looking to you as like, this person to like learn from. How do you feel about that role? You never think of yourself as an experienced rider because like the years pass really quickly. Then you're like, oh wait, I've been professional for like nearly 10 years. I always was wary of people who would be always trying to give you advice because they're generally like, people who are just trying to insert themselves and make themselves like important. So I just try to like, just lead by example, I guess. Oh. Uh, it's freezing and it's windy, it's raining. <laughs> Day is stage 6, 81 kilometers. They shortened it because of the weather. You asked me when I was starting hiking, like, you will never race in South Africa, race with like either pro team, with, like a legend like Loki. I would have asked you, are you? Are you mad? But actually that is happening. It makes me even like more proud of myself. Like as yes, yes, I have not won like big races, but what I have done for myself and the like the Kenya cycling and it also inspires me myself. I don't think um I understood necessarily the main barriers to to racing at this level for a guy like him, um, like growing up in Kenya. Obviously there's the barrier of opportunity, but I think it's more like a grassroots thing. You can give someone an opportunity and like a fancy bike and like nice kit, um, but ultimately that's it doesn't change much. I think all the, the change has to happen at like a grassroots kind of level. So if you can build like the cycling community and, and culture, then like that kind of slowly trickles up in a way. And the straight up, Lachlan and Kenneth. And then we have Andre Felipe and Louis Dunez from Stuttgart. Yeah, Felipe, 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 to the front. And if it is two minutes in the front. <laughs> in the beginning. Yeah, two minutes of of, of coverage in the TV for one minute. Okay. <laughs> we get to prove we line up early. <laughs> if they line up early. Take a rugby I used to think small before I came here. I think big now. I've seen things are possible. Yeah, even us from the village, we can make it. Even if it's not to the pro, at least we can improve our cycling. Even if I don't become a pro rider, I can be a good ambassador with my country people and my village people. <laughs> Hey!
The trophy designed by Neil Yonka. My actual dream is to work with my country people and my village people, helping, assisting people in even if it's teaching them how to mechanic bikes. Not necessarily like to be a professional. It's always measures of success, right? Your own measures of success, other people's measures of success, your sponsors. I'm always like evaluating what that means. As hard as it was, to like uh, give up personal ambitions for the race, that ultimately led to a much more successful week. If like we'd stayed focused on chasing results, we would have missed the point totally, <laughs> you know? That's an important role that professional sports can play. The audience is so big, the platform is so big. There's so much money involved that it's kind of ridiculous to just focus all those resources into just trying to go faster without looking at the wider community. He's not looking for pity, <laughs> you know what I mean? He just wants to race bikes and help other people race bikes and like make his community better along the way.